Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This time we'll be taking a look at Hell. And well, without further ado, let's move on to the unit itself. So Hell's Breath ended up getting a change. It used to be Hell's Scythe, now it's Hell's Reaper. The main change from what I recall anyway, because Hell's Scythe has been a long time, uh, the main change is the fact that she is now unaffected by effective against flying effects. Which kind of makes sense, I mean, she's literally a skeleton sitting on a throne. What are arrows supposed to do against her? I never really understood how that was effective against her, because, well, it just doesn't make sense. Um, though, obviously, the idea here is not, not so much to make um, hell, you know makes sense. It's mostly to make so that she's a good counter to Legendary Krom. Yes, we're still on this. Every single green that has released is good in some ways at dealing with that asshole. It's really to a point where really you just come across this a lot. I think like most banners Ever since Chrome's release, like starting with Rinka, basically had a counter to Chrome on them, uh, in a way, shape, uh, in a way, or well, in at least some some kind of way. Uh, it depends also on certain encounters, obviously. Though Hell is a fairly solid counter overall, purely because you know decent death, good C skill, decent attack. Uh, she works really well overall as a counter to Krom, and also a counter to other things, however she does have a few issues as well. So yeah, as for guard bearing, something I kind of did not realize on the initial banner this skill was added is the fact that it only works on enemy phase. Player phase, this has literally no effect, which is... wow. I do not understand how they decided to that this was okay. I, I just really don't get it. Guard bearing was never broken to begin with, and the fact that, you know, it, it doesn't work on initiation is a bit odd. It makes the skill overall very niche at best. I can see unit you like Florina make full use of it, because it lowers the amount of damage they take, but that's about it, really. Other than that, we have inevitable, inevitable Death, which pretty much is one of the, if not the strongest C skill we've ever gotten. Uh, remember Fox Domes? How about that as a C skill, and you don't even need to initiate for it to work, and you can even support allies with it. In a world where like some of the best C skill you have access to are stuff like Drive Attack. Minus 4 to all stat is kind of insane, isn't it? Um, and I'm sure a few people will not really realize this until they come across her, because it just makes her very annoying to take down. Essentially, just look at her stat, yeah? 38, 41, 30, 18, right? Basically look at it as 42 attack, 45 speed because of this C skill that cannot be countered in any way, shape or form. You're just going to take the, dame, the, the stat. You're that, or rather, you're just going to lose that period. And unlike, say, Curia, who we'll run into the obvious issue that is the fact that a, I do minus six attack and rest, but that's the that's taking the slot of my weapon, and that my weapon does nothing else. You can use that as a C skill. That's disgusting because it also allows you to, well, run a weapon that actually helps, and Hell's Reaper is actually a fairly solid weapon for this. So yeah, fairly good unit overall, just because of that C skill alone. Obviously, Hell's Reaper has a lot of potential, purely because of Mystic Boost, and obviously it's really the main set you should be running on her, but I, do, I really did want to highlight how insane Inevitable Death is. And also... Also, keep in mind, she doesn't need to be the one attacked for this to be taking effect. So if you're dealing with physical unit, it's very easy to just pull Hell, and then the unit you want to support uh, in front of Hell to take the brunt of the attack. 
As long as the enemy isn't ranged, they lose 4 across the board. It is pretty much worthless against ranged foes, however, so do keep that in mind. At least as far as a support tool is concerned. Guard bearing is kind of weird. I don't understand why she has that, honestly. Uh, I guess the idea is that she can now deal with a mage, and that's it. But let me just ask you this. In what world would you want to be able to deal with one mage sometimes, because I mean they can still double you, and if they have a guaranteed follow-up, they're just bone, most likely. In what world does this become okay, but you would just want to throw away Mystic Boost, which, in case you don't know, the way the weapon works, which, honestly, I just spoke about the effective against flying effect being removed, it's a cooldown minus one axe that hits res, as long as the enemy doesn't have magic or staff of their weapon, and also as long as they are not using magic or staffs. As long as she has over 1 HP, once per battle of course, as long as she has over 1 HP, she can just basically survive the hit. For free. So what you can do is make her speed good enough to the, beat to the point that she doesn't get doubled, and then just go to town with inevitable death, so again, getting doubled is very difficult. And then, then, what you are in a situation, basically the situation you're in, is just that, oh, Mystic Boost healed me for 6 every fight, right? I get hit once, the enemy doesn't kill me, because obviously they don't kill me, uh, because I'm not, at, I'm not at 1 HP, which means... Hell's Reaper procs, you're back to you're down to one HP, you get to do your one or two attack back, the fight ends, your HP goes back to seven, and you can just do that infinitely. If the enemy are melee or, or actually just not staff or uh, mages, and they cannot double you, or they don't have brave weapon, they are basically unable to kill her at all. They can't do anything to her. Because what ends up happening is just, hey, you, f you failed to kill, and now you just kill, and then you just rinse and repeat over and over until everything's dead. Obviously, it has actual counters, which is good, because unlike Chrome, you know, Chrome, the character that ends up with like a bulk of like about 90 in both stats, and. Uh, Typically, you need to double to actually have even a shot at killing, unless you have TA on a green, or your Rinka, you know, characters that are literally built around the idea of destroying Krom. <sighs> Jesus. I mean, Krom becomes pretty much very difficult to kill, even for actual counters. Hell as actual counters, so she's a lot more balanced. That said, while I do say she's balanced, as long as the enemy cannot double, they're basically boned. Legendary Alm, for example, if, they, if he cannot double, there's nothing he can do, he's just going to sit there and die, basically attacking into her, into her rather. That's just a good example be, among a lot of others. Honestly, Hell is very disgusting, but at the same time, like I said, she's balanced. Have a mage, and she just falls down basically very easily. So for AA, she is not that big of a threat. Obviously, any mage is just going to do the job, which is good. I like that because it basically means the unit is balanced. It's the same reason why I like Legendary Leaf. Despite the fact that he's really solid and really strong in the player's hand, he's very easy to play around because at the end of the day, if you have a TA Raven Tome with quick repost, or not even with Crick Repose, you're basically able to destroy him. Robin is a good counter to him. I kill him with like a 44 attack Raven T8 Tome, like... It's ridiculous how easy he is to deal with, because again, since he hits you twice, and you hit him back twice, he can have a 3 cooldown special. 3 cooldown special, ensure a kill a kills rather easily, especially with a skill such as Luna. It's, again, very cheap to have counter to Legendary Leaf, which makes him completely fine to me. Chrome is a different beast entirely. Having counters who are consistent 
at dealing with Krom is very, very, very difficult. Even Sylvain, as well as um, Selena, which are like pretty good counter to him, at least I found uh, from experience, are still not consistent. It, you basically have to pick and choose when to use them. Because, hey, if, for example, you have a Krom who is speed plus with darting blow, Sylvain might not be able to double, and then if there's a Dancer on there, that just means Wings of Mercy. And then you're in a very weird position, where you just haven't killed Krom, Dancer could come in and just dance him. It's just not great all around, is it? Which is kind of a shame. Uh, but it's kind of just how it is with Krom. Hell is just basically have a caster, you're good. Again, keep in mind, she is a flyer. She does not have access to lol skills, which again, should have been cav only, but that's beside the point. Since, she, since they cannot use lol skills or have anything to deal with blade tomes, she's basically just blade tome food. Literally anyone will work. Um, Cecilia as a 4 star plus 10 will work as an absolutely amazing counter to hell. And a lot of other units are just like that able to deal with her, which is great. And which is why also I feel like she's good in the player's hand but not in the AI. And that's a good thing. That's the best kind of units. That's why I liked early FEH despite the fact that it was filled with cav teams. Outside of that one map with the breakable walls, of course. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the comparison. Now, comparison is very straightforward. Keep in mind, Hell's Reaper hit allows her to hit res, but it doesn't. it's not adaptive damage. If you have to deal with someone with a high amount of res, well, that's actually going to be played against you. For example, if you have to deal with Sairi... I can't believe I'm using Sairi for a point here, but... Sairi, or even Fur, they have more res than defense. So, Hell's Reaper actually plays against you. So you do less damage. So, that point, while useful for the majority of the fight she comes across, isn't, like, the most important thing. As for Inevitable Death, if compared with Young Minerva, it's not that bad, actually. Uh, at the end of the day, she counteracts the minus 4 across the board with her own weapon, which gives her 4 attack speed death res, and a guard effect. The guard effect is really useful, because Hell has no protection against any kind of special. Um, that said, obviously... While she has no protection against, you know, special, as long as the enemy cannot double, uh, it doesn't really matter. That said, Bolt Fighter very much exists, and again, there is no counter to that for Flyers. But yeah, uh, if you compare Hell and Minerva here, at the end of the day, they basically have very similar res. Death-wise, she has uh, Minerva has six more defense. Speed-wise, she's behind by three speed. And attack-wise, behind by 5 attack, which is, you know, a lot. A lot. Um, which is basically spread around in death and res. That said, Minerva is a free unit. Uh, and overall, the guard effect, on top of having so much stats, is very good. Uh, I would say, overall, it does do a lot of good for the character. But yeah, um... Overall, I will say Hell is overall better. Uh, they both have cooldown minus one, of course, so that's not really a point for either of them. In fact, all three of them have cooldown minus one. Uh, so yeah, that said, the main thing with Hell is the second that you jump out of the weapon, it's not that great. It's really not that great. The second you switch out of the weapon, you basically are just a worse base Minerva. Uh, if you wonder why I'm saying this, let me explain. Uh, essentially, base Minerva with a resplendent it actually has a red has a res stat and actually is able to use Pegasus Flight rather well. Uh, for example, with a res refine, as you can see here, a buff into res, you are at 38 res. So Pegasus Flight 
which checks stat at start of combat. So even if the enemy does low attack res, doesn't matter. Um, you are still going to get the whole Pegasus flight effect. I mean, 38 res is very easy to work with this. Hell cannot do this, and Pegasus Flight is a broken, and I do, I do mean this, a truly broken skill. Uh, if you use this in tandem with, say, Faithful Axe, for example, uh, you're behind by 7 attack, of course, um, but in terms of stats, as long as you're adjacent to someone, you're only behind by 3 speed, uh, you have 7 more death, and you also have 13 more res. So you end up being bulkier overall. The only thing you're behind is speed. Obviously, you know, it's a bit awkward though because you lose cooldown minus one, but the idea here is if you take Hail outside of her pref, obviously Minerva is going to have more option. Cooldown minus one plus Wadao, for example, is a great option. It's very much usable, but kind of awkward at the same time. If you want to really make full use of this with Minerva, I really strongly recommend you to, to just, first off, go on, go full on with the flowers. But more importantly, uh, I would also recommend you to have um, a legendary hero boosting a res. Uh, Obviously not Guntra, because Guntra works really well in debuff teams, so she doesn't really work too well in tandem with Minerva. Plus they are both green, which is not really ideal. The ideal one I would say is Legendary Marth, ironically, but, you know, other than that... It's overall better to go for Minerva if you go for, like, side weapon in, ten in comparison to Hell. That said, Inevitable Death will work with regardless of the weapon, so... That does help a bit, it's just that her res is very awkward to work with if you want to work with anything else than her base weapon. So yeah, overall still decent, uh, it's just, you know. I wanted to really make the contrast with Minerva because she's basically the only axe flyer that can really abuse Pegasus Flight to a level that's actually pretty acceptable. I mean, this is without res plus, obviously you can just go res plus. You have 35 res then, with above that's 41 res. Very easy to work with. Very, very, very easy to work with. So yeah. Just keep that in mind if you actually want to work on one. Um, I might just do a video like covering resplendent heroes at one point, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna have the time since I'm going back to school in like three weeks. But uh, yeah. Next up, we'll move on to builds, or build, I should say, because there's really only one you should be working with. This is really the, the only build you can really do. Uh, the only thing I would say is, if you're afraid of not being able to have enough speed, which can actually, you know, be a thing considering Hell is very dependent on not being doubled to function as a unit, Speed Rest Solo is a good option, and whenever that becomes a thing, Attack Speed Solo Seal would actually be better. Uh, also keep in mind two things. You can use Guard Bearing if you're really afraid of that one mage, but you will need a healer to really function, because otherwise you're basically boned. You also would be pretty terrible on enemy phase if you have to deal with more than one unit. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Also, having a bit more speed can actually not hurt, in the sense that, obviously, if you have to deal with lulls, the lull attack speed is very hurtful, uh, because it makes, basically, 55 speed go all the way down to 46. Um, in which case, dual on might be a problem to hell. So, yeah. Um... Other than this, yeah, um, there's also Distant Foil. I'm sure some people are going, to be a are going to be asking me whether or not this is worth it on her. To some extent I would say yes, but you have to be very careful to just not put her in any range of any mages at all, because otherwise you're boned. Um, obviously, I mean, I don't think I have to really explain this to most. 
Uh, this then fall basically means you cannot even get a chance to hit back, which uh, is very, very concerning. Because it basically means if you get attacked by a mage and there's a dancer on the team, they can just dance and kill you off, even if you are able to take the first hit. So it can be very awkward to work around. You also do not get the 5 attack and defense against, you know, dragons. Um, but it's not as important overall. The Obviously, you cannot do that with mages and healers as well, but I mean... You don't get to hit them back, so who cares. But yeah, uh, this is really the main set that really works. Keep in mind, if you are... if. Attack Rest Solo ever becomes a thing. You could also run this and run Speed Plus instead. Um, if you are, again, afraid that your speed will not be good enough. This is one of the very few units that I will genuinely say that being a speed monster on her is not that bad. It's more like covering your bases. Because, again, you cannot get doubled. If you get doubled, typically you're going to die for it. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have anything else to say about Hell. It is a very straightforward. Now, as for the banners themselves, the, the banner characters themselves, I'm going to be covering um, the non-mythic slash legendary first, because obviously I did say I was going to do a tier list, and so I did. Though keep in mind, keep in mind, please. Before I talk about the tier list itself, this is a first draft, okay? It's not perfect, and I'm not going to be covering every character on it. Reason being, I want to cover the character as they are on the legendary slash mythic banner. So it's not too much information at once, and I don't want the video to be too long uh, for people who just want to watch the video. Uh, I don't want a video that's two hours long, basically, to just explain intricacy with certain characters. So yeah. Um, so first off, Fiora, because there's like three units. Fiora is a pretty mediocre unit overall, but Pegasus Flight is honestly one of the best skill for any flyers, at least Axe, Sword, and Lance ones, because it's unusable on literally anything else. But uh, yes, this skill can be extremely broken. Um, Resplendent Minerva is a fantastic example of why it works. Mine hits 45 death and 45 res pretty easily, uh, with Legendary Marth actually being active. Which makes her extremely frustrating to deal with because it effectively makes... As long as the enemy has 31 or less res, effectively makes her hit 52 death and res. And on top of like around 75, 76 attack, which, um, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. And her speed is not a problem either. She actually, because I pair her up with Altena, who has joint drive speed, she ends up with around 50 speed. I might actually do a showcase of them once I'm done with the merges on Minerva, but that's gonna take not two months, but four now. Thank you for, uh, alternating weekly banners instead of, you know, just having them both running at the same time like it should be. Oh, you missed the, you missed the weekly banner? Aw, oh, that's so bad, dude. What a shame. What a shame. Better wait 40 weeks. Jesus. <laughs> it's just kind of depressing. But, oh well. That's kind of what it is. Again, while Fiora is not really good, Pegasus Flight is quite amazing. Uh, I actually use it on Yuya Gundra as well, and it's really, really potent. As for Layla, Layla is probably one of the best AR offense... I don't want to see Wall Breaker, but like Map Starter, I guess. Uh, because what you can do with her is just basically combo her into, say, Peony, and make her attack into an enemy, right? And then, basically, you switch place with Peony. And then what ends up happening is that Peony can then aerobatic into Layla, and then Layla can just repo her. Or, alternatively, you can also do something similar with Lilith, 
um, because Lilith will be able to teleport to anywhere that her friend unit is within three space of her. So, you know, it's pretty good. So you can actually combo the two together pretty well. But obviously Peony is, you know, a bonus, not a bonus unit, but a light blessing unit, so it works a bit better for this. Lilo can also use Disarm Trap, so you can actually deal with traps with no problem. Even if it's a movement trap, it's going to be completely fine as a result. Basically, she can definitely work really well in AR. Outside of AR, she is still pretty decent. Uh, as far as offense is concerned, I believe she gets 5 attack, 5 speed if, her, um, if she initiates, and a fire sweep effect on top of it if uh, our her um, support unit is within two space before on top of that switching doing the whole switcheroo that makes her really solid overall and obviously being an infantry unit that does help quite a bit and her bulk is also fairly even so it's a lot harder to actually snipe her in one hit at least you know if you don't run life in the four which Jesus Christ I don't think is really too great for her anyway Sturdy impact is definitely the way to go for her. Her speed is more than enough. Since her weapon effectively, which also has speed plus 3, effectively gives her plus 8 speed. So 41 speed plus that plus a buff. You're basically looking at 55 speed on merged. With neutral speed. I think you'll be fine on speed. So sturdy impact, which will basically give you almost the same attack. But, you'll keep 5 death, 5 res, and on top of that get 10 death on initiation. Is just overall better. Uh, it's just easier to bait, it's just easier to debuff. Very easy to also combo Layla into... Um, well, for one, Kronia. Or, um, also Matthew. I mean, that's kind of the idea. If you combo her into Matthew, for example, and you run Attack Smoke and Speed Smoke as the seals, you can basically make so Matthew gets a whooping um, 28 true damage from his weapon. Uh, not true damage, attack from his weapon, my bad. Uh, and just, you know, you could also combo that into Duo Mikaya. And then basically what ends up happening is you, may, you snipe that unit, probably killed it. Then Matthew comes in as a Vantage Broadleaf tank, because he has enough HP to actually get into Vantage easily. Uh, combo this into Mikaya. Mikaya is just going to be making so you get true damage on top of it. So 52, 28 attack, 28 true damage. I think you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, you can do a lot of very fun stuff with this. Which really makes me sad that we don't get more units that are unique like this. Instead it's just like the one unit every six months, I guess, which is kind of a shame. But yeah, Layla is definitely a fantastic unit. As far as dagger units, she's by far, in my opinion, one of the best. Potentially even the best, depending on the situation. She can also be comboed into Gangrel because she will obviously make so that the enemy has a debuff on them. So his weapon will proc, giving him 4 across the board and the true damage based off his res. So yeah, a uh, very good unit overall. What's not so great is... Uh, Fallen female Corin. She is still very solid. Uh, in fact, she is still one of the best dragons, if not the best, or at least tied for the best with um, Corin. However, oh, and also Winter Sophis. However, the problem that she runs into nowadays is just too much dragon killers. They are everywhere at this point, and it's just getting ridiculous. So, for her to actually work too well is kind of inconsistent, especially if you're looking at the side of, like, uh, AR, if you are trying to use her for AR on Astra Season, just give up. Or wait, is it Astra or is it Light? I believe it's Light. Because, um, Grazier is Dark. Or is she Anima? No, she's Anima, isn't she? Whatever, the season where Thrazir actually shows up, um, Corin will be in trouble because Thrazir is effective against Dragon, and she's also, you know, a defense AR unit, which means she will appear a good bit of time. 
which makes it very annoying for you to deal with her uh, if you have a Corin. So obviously, you want to use her in the opposite season. I'm not even going to try to say like the which one is right, because it's really difficult to say. But yeah, the uh, opposite one, and even then you might have to deal with dragon killers because they are just that common at this point. Still an overall decent unit, just did not age too well with all the dragon killers. She can still work pretty well as an age check as well. But yeah, um, next up are going to be the legendary units. So I'm going to go with groups of colors. Altina, Legendary Roy, and Ike. So, moving on to the tier list itself. Now you may be wondering, why is Ike so low? Um, the reason being is very simple. There's so many units that can do what he can do. Uh, the main thing that he could really do is having DC with a 4 cooldown Aether. That was taken. Um, now we have Fallen Ike that has this. And while you have to wait for Fallen Hike to come back, whereas you know when I when Legendary Ike comes back, Fallen Hike will most likely be on a banner where he is the only red focus. On a three-man banner, most likely as well. Three-man banner has infinitely better raid than legendary banners. Uh, to put it in perspective, getting well actually, you know, going back here, you can see. Getting a 5-star, red, uh, specific focus, is 2.585. For a 3-man banner, where Fallen Ike would be on, it would be around 3.3-3.4% chance of getting Ike. Yeah, those odds are looking a lot better, do they? And also, everything that he does or at least Legendary Ike does, Fallen Ike just completely eclipses him in. E eclipses him in. There. Not to mention, a lot of units have cooldown minus one, uh, with very broken effects for sword units nowadays, like Larsa plus DC. The enemy cannot buff in any stats. You get four across the board. A cooldown minus one, so you can actually use the A first strat if you want. The individuality that he used to had to have is pretty much gone. The main the main thing he really had before that was the fact that he could use a sturdy stance three skill, or like you know such skills to basically have access to a guard like effect, which basically would allow him to combo this into special spiral, so he could just chug Aether constantly, but again Fallen Ike exists. So this makes this unit completely obsolete. Uh, nothing you can do is just not done with by other units that are easier to get. This is one of the problem with the legendary heroes. Unless they have a very good niche, they are pointless. Like for example, and I'm not going to cover this character, but legendary Erica. Her niche has been the best Gale Force unit because she doesn't need to have heavy blade. Or at least, in the sense that if you want to use multiple characters with heavy blade. If you're looking at the sense of who's the best Gale Force unit, that would be obviously Elliewood. Then Brave Roy, then her. But she's a good one-off to have because she does not really need heavy blade, which means that she can actually use other things. And with the advent of solo skills, it only just... It just shows how much ridicu uh, how ridiculous it gets. Uh, her being able to use, say, Attack Def Solo, or Speed Res, or Attack Res Solo, basically gives her a lot of option overall. But yes. Moving on to Roy. Roy is very similar to Legendary Morph. I don't think I have to explain that all too well. Uh, the difference is that he that I that blah, blah, blah. the difference is that Marv gets more options because his weapon basically has bonus double instead of a DC weapon. Um, DC weapons are not bad by any means, but if all they have is DC, or if they have even worse a conditional DC, ah, oh, Ocean, what have they done to you? 
But yeah, if they, if they have either of those things, it's very awkward to work with. The main thing that you can really have is the fact that you can use any A skill of your choice, which I mean, if you have bonus doubler, you just end up being legendary, legendary Marth, right? If you had DC. You know the difference, though? The difference is that you have Fire Emblem on Legendary Marth. And uh, the only skill that is unique to Roy, outside of his pref, of course, is Human Virtue. Which is, um, I mean, it's useful in AA. It's a good option to buff attack and speed by 6. Is it, like, that useful, though? Not really. It's an easy to obtain speed buff, which is extremely useful. So, but yeah, other than that, it's kind of awkward. So Marth is overall just a more versatile version of Roy. They have basically the same stat line as well. But yeah, uh, that's kind of just how it is. As for the last one, which is Altena, Altina is still very solid, um, but overall just an inferior legendary leaf for the most part. And people might be wondering, wait, the hell? Legendary leaf? Why? How do you compare the two? Um, really, I guess I'm going to be talking a bit about legendary leaf here, but legendary leaf's weapon is a brave weapon that's also multi-phase. You can combo this into close counter. The difference is that Altina is a red, so getting 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 rid of blues can be a bit of a problem. Um, in fact, it's actually a very big problem for her, because in a lot of ways, if she doesn't kill with the two hits, she's typically dead. Uh, Legendary Leaf has the same problem, of course, but the difference is that you can set up easier with him, you can snipe, you can gale force, and you can also... On top of it all, uh, do the Vantage CC strat very well. Leaf overall just has so much more options. The thing with Altina is basically you want Twin Blades, you want Vantage, you want Brave Lucina support, and that's kind of just it. That's kind of the character in a nutshell. Um, you basically proc Vantage, you go <laughs> and you hit twice and hope for the best. Hope that it kills the enemy. Which, um,. Works sometimes, but not as consistently as Legendary Leaf. And the thing with Legendary Leaf is that since he's range, he can just snipe something out. And he also has a Gale Force in his weapon that's very easy to work around. So you can just like snipe a unit, dance Leaf, he snipes another one, procs Gale Force, snipe another one, and then he's basically in Vantage range, of course. Um, to basically, or if he's not in vintage range, you have eliminated, el eliminated most, if not all, the threats un that, that could one-shot him, so you can just basically kill everything. And on top of that, you will proc Depth Smoke, of course, so everything on the enemy side will basically be easy picking uh, on enemy phase with Fierce Stance. Or if you want a Brazen Skill and so on and so forth. Really, there's a lot you can do with Leaf. That's why he's kind of one of the best unit. He's not that great in the AI's hand, but in the player's hand, he is absolutely phenomenal. Altina is kind of a wheelchair compared to her, which it makes it even more sad that we actually got Altina over Legendary Leaf in the voting gauntlet. What a disappointment that one was. But yeah. Still, overall, Altina is a very good unit, but she's more of a one-off than a unit you would rather merge. At least that's the way I look at it. So yeah. Uh, next up, the next block is... Legendary Tiki and Fiorum. So... You may see that uh, Fjorm is actually a bit higher than most people expected, for most reasons. Uh, Fjorm is one of those units that is terrible as a one-off, and a lot better when merged up. Or as a bonus hero, depending on the situation of course. Or a mixture of both. 
Honestly, she is uh, a bit iffy to work with, and the more time passes, the more awkward she gets. Joint Drive Speed kind of, you know, band-aids a few of the issues she had, but overall she is okay. Uh, very similar to Roy, Legendary Roy in a way, uh, because she has no unique skills. Uh, really, the only thing that the, the, the two of them have to go for themselves are stats. Fjorm is overall pretty decent. Um, I'm not going to be showing sets, but essentially the idea is that she can work as an Omni tank, uh, using her with a breath skill or comboing her into, you know, Brave Lucina, and then using a stand skill. Again, very similar stuff to what I talked about with Roy. She can also use No See Disrupt pretty well because her rest stat is actually not bad. Really, overall, she's a pretty decent unit, but she is also slightly below average because, I'm gonna be honest, she does not age that well. And uh, she would have been a bit higher were it not for the fact that we're finally getting Lance Infantry units. So we're actually getting competition for her. We're getting to a point where, you know, outside of the fact that she can have the rest to deal with AoEs, which, I mean... A bit inconsistent on that one, but it can happen. Even though she has the rest for this, uh, if you compare her with female Chris, if you do not consider AoEs, right? If you do not consider AoEs, Chris is for the most part better, having cooldown minus one, five mi minus five to all stats, penalty negation. It's just why. There's just way too much going on in Chris's weapon. It's very hard to compare. So, you know, that's kind of how it is. But that's kind of the problem with Lens Infantry in general. I do not expect a single one to really make waves for a long time now. Purely because of this fact. As for Legendary Tiki being this slow... Man... Time was not kind to her. Dragon killers, armor killers, being blue is also pain. It's just... She's a really good Omni tank, but the second she has to deal with effectiveness, it's a problem. Infantry Pulse team, that's a problem. Movement, that's a problem. Being forced to have another armored unit to even be able for her to move, that's a huge problem. And that's kind of the problem, really. No pun intended. Because we don't have skills such as Stride, moving Legendary Tiki around is just the, a problem in its own. But then on top of it, she's not even that great a tank anymore. Which is very awkward. I have her at plus 10 and I can assure you, assure you, there are so many cases where I just cannot use her as a counter. I have to deal with Legendary Ohm? I'm too slow. I can't really do that all too well. Great. Like, I would basically need to go out of my way to go all the way for speed, deal with Legendary Ohm and Ohm alone. And then if I have to deal with anything else, I'm doing worse than what I used to have. Which is just kind of a shame. I really do like Tiki, so... I mean... Not gonna lie, this kinda sucks. It kinda sucks. Now moving on to Hell and Edelgard. So, Edelgard. Edelgard is fairly awkward, and now Hell is also a very strong counter to her. If you have basically Mystic Boost, you can literally face tank Edelgard and even if you did zero damage three times, she would still not be able to kill you at all. Because what ends up happening is she hits Gale Force procs. Oh wait, Hell is back to seven HP. Hits. Nope, still not dead. Oh well, now Gale Force itself procs. Hits. Oh, still not dead. And you know, it's just kind of a non-issue for Hell. Um, as for Edelgard herself, she is very gimmicky overall. Uh, at the end of the day, you basically just want to be able to one-shot with her, but it's 
very hard to be consistent with that, at least in Arena. Plus, again, being an armored unit is suffering. But at least that makes her a lot more balanced than something like Legendary Krom. So yeah. As for Hell, well, I mean... Total physical immunity, as long as they do not double or brave you, is pretty insane. See, scale is also very, 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 very potent. So, you know. It does give her a fairly good niche. And that niche is a lot more easy to work with, because strike can actually be very awkward to be around. Not being able to very to basically support as consistently as you'd want. Um, Stride is also never gonna work on turn one because you always have an, an ally next to you. At least for most map. Which makes it very awkward overall to just play around Stride. Um, at least early on into the fight. It is a very phenomenal skill overall. Just what a shame that it's stuck to like units that did not need more help. But oh well. It's kind of just how it is now, isn't it? But yeah. Hell can... Uh, not Hell. Edelgar can definitely work as a Gelforce unit. It's just a bit awkward overall. And also, she is pretty easy to deal with from a, from a ranged. There are a lot of units that can just deal with her pretty well. And the main set that you want to run on her basically means that she has to forego distant counters, so dealing with her is very easy overall. And she is also very annoying to play around. If you have to deal with ranged units, a lot of the time you're just going to be like, I can't have an old guard anywhere near this until the threat is over, which is very awkward. Like, if you have to deal with Legendary Alm, I mean, you cannot block the. You, you cannot block his follow up because no follow up. Yeah, it's really hard because of his weapon. So you have to kind of initiate into him, which can be very awkward because you get four charges instead of, you know, uh, five. So you do not proc Gale Force unless you run Quick and Pulse, which I mean. Definitely is an option, but also very straightforward and very easy to play around. And also, you still need to get to the point of attacking Alm. If Alm stays behind uh, his allies, you are in a pretty shit position, my dude. So yeah, overall, she's a pretty okay unit. Uh, it's just, if the goal is to get a very high scoring unit, get Legendary Krom, he is infinitely better, and Legendary Krom is a team player, because he's able to repo your your allies out of danger, and then fuck right off as well. Which is very useful, because it allows you to just basically move your units around uh, without losing score over it. Or even without a dancer, which is pretty useful. As for the unit itself, I'll wait for the month where I, where he actually reappears to really explain why I think that he's S tier. I keep say, I, I keep complaining about him, but keep in mind, in the end of the AI and in the end of the player is a completely different thing. This tier list is mostly for characters in the end of the player, because nothing in the end of the play, uh, in the end of the AI matters except with how annoying certain units are to deal with. You don't care about your arena your arena defense like being filled with like a million wins, okay? You do not care about this. Nobody does. You care a bit for AR defense, but for most for most people unless they're really try hard, it doesn't matter, okay? That's kind of just how it is. So yeah, in the end of the in the end of the player, he is a lot worse than in the end of the AI because the AI is very suicidal. But yes, uh, that's about all I'll say about Chrome. Let's move on to the next set of unit, and by set of unit, I really just mean Air. Air is uh, she's aight. 
Oh, actually, wait, no, I'm missing Trezir. So, Trezir. Trezir is A+, plus because at the end of the day, most of her niche ends up being a defense unit. In a lot of cases, you can get a unit that does most of her job for a lot cheaper, which is a Durdry. Because Durdry can actually hit a good chunk of death, a good chunk of res, um, denies any buff the enemy may have, while also being able to support a different V skill, uh, such as Desperation, for example, that's what mine runs, uh, and also have a very similar stat. Uh, the only thing that she really struggled, or read that is, is speed to some extent. Drain Drive Speed completely nailed that coffin, so that's not a problem anymore. And, well, it makes her very consistent overall. I will say, Dirdre is very solid overall, and it's kind of one of the main reasons why Trezir is not as useful. She is amazing for defenses, of course, because her weapon is very obnoxious to get around in a mode that has debuff across the entire map, like, all the time. Um, at least, if, if it doesn't, it's very easy to play around for it to do so. And yeah, um, Trezir is overall a very solid unit. Kind of just like how Edelgard is a one-trick pony, she is a bit of the same. Um, and she can actually screw you over with the debuff. That said, obviously, some units do enjoy to, to take the debuff, such as Brunia and uh, Idun. But it can be a bit awkward to use overall. Still, fairly decent unit. Uh, I will say, Trezir on lower merges, if you are not planning to merge Durdry, is absolutely better than Durdry. It's just that Durdry at high merges. I'll say it's typically better than Trezir, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, moving on now to Colorless with Air and Air alone. Air is a pretty... eh unit, but at the same time you mostly use her for the fact that she boosts res and HP. Which she does fine, because that's basically the only thing that you get out of her. That said, you also get her for free, so pulling for her is not that useful. Unless you're looking for Mystic Boost to kill for her big mama. Uh, but yes, unless you're doing that, or you want Mystic Boost for another unit, which is completely fair. Overall, Air is pretty much a dud. Um, even when she was released, she felt pretty underpowered. Um, she was pretty okay back then, purely because she was a perma bonus unit in AR, but... Of course, that did not last forever. Overall, she's an okay unit, or pretty average unit. Honestly, I'm thinking I might lower her down a tier, uh, but at the end of the day, it's mostly because of her blessing that she's used, and the fact that she gives some kind of healing over turn. She can be comboed into Hell as well, with Sparkling Boost, to basically make so that Hell is a bit more HP more consistently, but... Overall, it's really not that needed. Hell can actually provide also a bit of sustain, but I will also say this. If what you want is sustain at the start of the turn, obviously this is not covering the entire map like air does, but it also heals more than one ally for sure, because um, the way air's sparkling boost works is the one that took the most damage will get the heal if more than one unit took like say 20 damage exactly if all of the unit took 20 damage exactly she'll heal everyone for 10 which is great but if there's only one that took 20 damage only that person will get healed and if if and if one character took 40 damage but the rest took like 20 then you get in a situation where it's like oh well i mean you know, I healed one character for 10. Alternatively, you could get, get a, an actual dancer for most maps, which can actually provide passive healing, that being Raisin, which is a 3 to 4 star unit. So that niche is not very great, is it now? And uh, obviously, on top, on top of the healing, you know, on top of the healing, Raisin is a dancer, unlike Air, so he has overall more use. 
But yeah, overall, she's mostly an AR unit. Outside of AR, she's not very used for very obvious reasons. But yeah, I might actually lower her down to A-, minus. now that I think about it. Or even maybe B tier, I'm not so sure. I think A- minus should be fine though, because she's a ranged unit, and ranged units are... And they are pretty decent, and she can definitely work with her pref, since her pref plus, um... Actually, just her pref is basically 18 might, so you can actually work with it pretty well. But yeah. That's about all I had to say about the legendary slash mythic heroes of this banner. Hopefully this was enlightening. Uh, it's I'm going to be covering, obviously, the ones coming up next month, during next month. Uh, let me know how you think about this. It's basically my way to basically take it easy, but not really. Uh, to really talk about characters without, obviously, you know... Um, oversaturating a video. This is still 55 minutes, guys. That's me trying to be short and concise with this. Because, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm covering nine characters out of... What is that, like... 11, 12, 16, 18, 20, 23... 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 35. 35! If I covered every single character, this video would be over two hours. I can assure you this. So, uh, yeah. It's overall kind of awkward. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully this was enlightening, like I said. In conclusion, Hell is a fairly solid one-off. Uh, if you try to go for more than one, I mean, personally, I would recommend against it. Uh, she, unless you really like the character for some reason, she is not really worth it to go through all that to get her overall. Oh, outside of you know that one copy, because again. Counter to Legendary Chrome and counter to anything non-staff slash, slash uh, mages is pretty huge. Pretty huge. But yeah, uh, that's about all I have to say here. Hopefully, again, this was in, in, uh, enlightening. Honestly, this video was kind of a pain to make because uh, I had to fiddle for three hours because... OBS decided to just die on me after I updated my drivers, so that was fun. By the way, it's still not fixed, it's just that I have two capture cards in this computer, so I'm using the other one right now. So, uh, if there's a dip in quality, or, you know, with the fact that, you know, th there might be a bit of lag, I don't know. This is why, but otherwise there's just nothing I can do. There's nothing I can find that actually, like, helps me with finding the issue, per se, so it's very awkward for me to work around this. But yeah, um... Again, I hope this was helpful. I'm going to be seeing you all next time with the pirate banner, I guess? Har har! Uh, but yes. I guess I'll see you then, then. Have a nice one, everyone. And see you all later.